Wait, wait, before you click on that dislike button, let me show you something. See, I promise, I think Megalodon's cool. I even have a tooth from one of its close relatives. Oh, sorry, how do you pronounce this? And that leads me to the reason why I'm making this video as my 10,000 subscriber special. Megalodon was a really cool animal, but it's definitely overrated in that it takes the spotlight away from all sorts of other incredibly unique prehistoric species, including its close relatives, the other sharks in the genus Otidus, in which the tooth I own belongs to Otidus obliquus, which was likely a smaller ancestor of Megalodon. Yep, I bet you didn't actually know that. There's not one, not two, but three other species of megatooth shark in the Otidus genus alongside Megalodon, all of which got significantly larger than today's Great White, and all of them I think are really cool in their own aspect. But sadly, the Megalodon's the only species talked about. And the fact that some people actually believe that this giant 65-foot shark could still be alive today is just ridiculous, and I'm gonna disprove that in this video, in addition to a lot of other accolades, which I believe should go to other prehistoric animals. Starting off though, the Megalodon is definitely, without a doubt, 1000% extinct. And before you click off, the reason why people actually believe this shark is still alive today is kind of interesting. So you guys remember back when Shark Week used to be focused on shark education and conservation and not dramatized documentaries? Yeah, me neither. That was a really long time ago. But back in 2013, when I was a little kid, I was watching Shark Week and I noticed a very interesting documentary that was being played in front of my very own eyes. Normally, 90% of Shark Week documentaries all focus on the great white shark. So usually me being the distinguished kid that I was, I always prefer to watch documentaries about the other species of sharks that were less talked about. And apparently there would end up being one species of shark that at the time was less talked about, but would end up taking the crown from the Great White, that being the Megalodon. Despite it being extinct for 2.5 million years, Shark Week knew they could capitalize off of this incredibly fascinating extinct animal, and that was when they decided to make a fake documentary, claiming that the shark was still alive. And honestly, calling this piece of media a fake documentary would be an understatement, as literally almost every single person featured in the documentary is an actor. And don't even get me started on this clip. Uh, take a closer look at that pectoral fin. Okay. Right. On the back edge, right near the body. You see that point? Yeah. That doesn't fit the taxonomy of great whites either, or any other large shark known today. But it does match another animal. If we could get that picture back up. The freeze frame. Yeah. All right. So here's the freeze frame from Jake Skelton's sailing footage, right? And I take responsibility. Get out! Yeah, the special effects are so bad that I've seen better graphics from a Jurassic World mobile game. On top of that, in order for Megalodon to have survived in the modern day, it likely would have had to completely change its lifestyle, as Megalodon was originally a coastal species, primarily feeding on whales in coastal waters. And there's no way you're going to be able to hide a 60-foot coastal shark. And if it did adapt for the deep ocean, which is the complete opposite habitat that it was originally surviving in, one, how would it sustain itself with the incredibly barren, food-deprived landscape of the deeper ocean? And two, how would it be able to adapt so fast that in only a few million years it went from a coastal species going down to living in the trenches where it would have to evolve to have bigger eyes, a slower metabolism, and also would likely have to have adapted a completely different body plant in order to deal with the much more extreme pressures experienced in the open deep. In other words, either Megalodon is extinct or Megalodon has evolved into such a vastly different creature that it's virtually unrecognizable to its previous counterpart. And even then, with how much we talk about Megalodon, why don't we talk about other prehistoric shark species, such as this thing? I mean, the fact that I could tell you way more about Megalodon than Strethocanthus I think is a pretty huge problem, because just look at how unique this shark is. Or how about Cartoxy rhino, which actually was about the same size as our modern day great white shark, but unlike our current day great white shark, instead of it feeding on seals, it likely would have scavenged on dinosaurs that got stranded out to sea. Though both of these species still pale in comparison to the prehistoric ratfishes, which were closely related to sharks, 
such as Helicoprion and Etudos. I'm sorry, but screw the Meg. If I saw a movie about a shark with a chainsaw for a mouth, I'm definitely gonna watch it. Or imagine if instead of just making a movie about a big great white shark or Megalodon, they made a movie about all the different species of Otudus. Like imagine a shark movie with just an army of different variations of Megalodon. That would be awesome and way better than these stupid overrated movies. After all, why don't these movies take another prehistoric animal that lived alongside Megalodon and might have even preyed on them? The Leviathan, which I'm just going to call Leviathan, was a giant species of macro-predatory sperm whale, which while slightly smaller than Megalodon, had even larger teeth and might have possibly hunted other whales in packs, using its intelligence and brute force in order to take down behemoths, such as modern-day humpback and mink whales. And unlike the Megalodon, the Leviathan also had a lot of other very unique abilities, such as echolocation and possibly a call, which was likely so powerful it was occasionally used to stun its prey. Unlike the Megalodon though, the Leviathan mostly spent its time in deeper waters, meaning that competition between these two species was likely very limited. Though fights between the two species likely did occur, and there is some slight evidence for this, as Otuda's teeth have been found in the spines of Leviathan specimens, implying the fact that there was likely some conflict between these whales and some of the Otuda species, likely including Megalodon. This means that at least a few times throughout history, these giant leviathans were fighting off and surviving very large sharks, likely including Megalodon. Oh, and if you thought that was crazy, then you know the common belief that Megalodon had the strongest bite of any animal to ever live? Well, it's got some serious competition. Meet the Dinosuchus, arguably the largest crocodilian to ever live. This giant ancestor of the American alligator got up to 50 feet long and about 14 tons. And despite only being about a fifth the weight of Megalodon, its bite force was about the same, at about 20,000 psi. Unlike Megalodon though, the Dinosuchus lived way before its time actually preying upon primarily dinosaurs instead of whales. And we know this because we've actually found Dinosuchus' teeth lodged inside of hadrosaur bones, meaning that this crocodile also had an affinity for going after some pretty huge prey. Still, due to this creature having a much lighter weight than Megalodon, as Megalodon's- holy crap, that's heavy. Wow. Yeah, while Megalodon was considered to be the largest and most impressive predator to ever live at one point, but this has now been disproven thanks to a new discovery of a marine reptile at 10 times the size of Dinosuchus. And no, it's not the Mosasaurus. For as much as I love Mosasaurus, I think there's a really good argument to be made that the Mosasaurus and its close relatives are even more overrated than the Megalodon. For starters, they did not get this big. Current estimates put the largest species of Mosasaurus at about 56 feet, which is still dwarfed by the Megalodon's 65 foot maximum. There's also a lot of common misconceptions that go around when it comes to the Mosasaurs, the main one being that they're a type of crocodilian, which isn't actually the case. Mosasaurs are actually more closely related to our modern day monitor lizards than they are to any other animal alive today. And before I get onto the true largest predator to ever swim the Earth's oceans, I gotta talk about one of my favorite features that all Mosasaurs share. That being their incredibly unique and powerful pharyngeal jaw structure. Similar to modern day moray eels, the Mosasaurs had a second set of mobile jaws in the back of their throat, which they could slide in and out of their bodies in order to get a better grip on their prey, which likely would have consisted primarily on other marine reptiles and sharks. But now, talking about the real kings of the world's prehistoric oceans, we got the giant ichthyosaurs. Yep, you probably thought these guys were all pretty small. But believe it or not, some of them might have even gotten larger than our modern day blue whale. Yep, despite existing over 200 million years before our modern day whales would begin to evolve, the Triassic's ichthyosaurs were absolute titans, even dwarfing most of, if not all of our modern day whale species in size. With the two largest species being known, while mostly fragmentary, are the Ost Colossus and the Ichthyotitan, both of which could have gotten over 80 feet long and weighed over 100 tons. And believe it or not, in the case of the Ost Colossus, which 
at its maximum estimated size could have been over 115 feet long, was actually still growing. This would make the Ost Colossus not just the largest predator to ever live on this planet, but possibly the largest animal ever discovered, dwarfing the Megalodon in both size and weight. Still, incredibly little is known about these incredibly massive and majestic titans, as we don't even know for sure what they actually ate. I mean, we could only imagine what it would take to sustain a top predator that's over 120 feet in length. Think about it, if the Megalodon already needed entire whales to sustain itself, despite being cold-blooded, these ichthyosaurs likely would have needed a titanically large amount of food in order to sustain their gargantuan body size. It sees questions that, in my opinion, make these giant ichthyosaurs just as, if not even more interesting than the Megalodon, which we know a lot more about thanks to the fact that it lived a lot closer to modern day, and we could use some of its closest modern day relatives for comparison, such as the Great White Shark and its actual closest relative, the sand tiger shark. In which one thing that does apply to all of the animals that I've mentioned throughout this video is that there's so many more interesting things about each and every one of these species beyond just their size and what they could kill. It's just that unfortunately, since we can't travel through time, we really can't figure out that much beyond the basics of these incredibly unique prehistoric creatures. But we could make inferences based on fossil discoveries which we have found, such as us discovering Megalodon nurseries along Florida's coast. Was Megalodon possibly a social species when it was younger? Unfortunately, it is very hard to know for sure as, of course, the Megalodon is 100% without a doubt extinct, and unfortunately, whenever we talk about Megalodon, all people want to hear about is what it could or will be killing next. None of the animals that I've mentioned are killing machines, and no animal in general is truly a monster. Not even the Great Megalodon. And while I did spend a lot of this video trashing Megalodon, I still love this incredibly unique prehistoric creature. I just wanted to bring light to a lot of the other prehistoric creatures which get outshined by this incredibly unique species, which is unfortunately not always portrayed in an animalistic light. Speaking of animals, there were so many other species I wanted to talk about in this video but just simply didn't get the time for, such as the Basilosaurus, including Basilosaurus, and Perusetus. I also really wanted to talk about some other South American giants, such as the Titanoboa and Perusaurus, which I think are just as if not more impressive than the Megalodon. So if you want to see more videos in the coming future of me talking about all sorts of incredible prehistoric life, in addition to all of the incredible modern day animal mysteries that plague our minds and fascinate us in ways in which we simply cannot explain, then please like and subscribe. By the way, thank you all so much for 10,000 subscribers. YouTube is my main source of income at the moment, so every view counts. So thank you so much for your support and goodbye.